Hello, it's Randy from Voices and welcome back to another video. It's so good to see you here today. Today we're going to be talking about using Adobe Audition for your voiceover recordings. Now Adobe Audition, it is one of the fan favorites and it's not surprising. It's loaded with all sorts of tools that you can use to process your vocal performances. So let's go ahead and jump into Adobe Audition and get it set up for your first voiceover session. The first thing that we want to do when we get in here is set up our audio interface or our USB microphone to get into the software. So to do that, we'll go up to Adobe Audition at the top here, preferences, and we're going to go to audio hardware. This will allow us to determine which equipment is getting into our software. So you can see here where it says default input. This is set to the MacBook Pro's uh, internal microphone. If you have a USB microphone or an audio interface, something like a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or a Focusrite Solo or something by Presonus like the AudioBox 96, you'll see that right here. Um, but because I don't have a microphone plugged in, it's just going to default to the system input. But you do want to make sure that this is selected as your microphone first. Otherwise, you'll be using your internal computer microphone to record your voiceover, which wouldn't be the greatest. System output, we want to make that our interface as well. If you're using a USB microphone, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You could set this output to your USB microphone and then plug your headphones into your microphone, or you can set this to your default output and then plug headphones directly into your computer. Once that's all set up, we can go ahead and click OK. And now we know that our microphone is getting into our system. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is set up a multi-track session. Now, you don't have to set up a multi-track session. If you go down to this record button and click record, you'll see it will create a new audio file for you. But that's a bit limiting because you won't be able to compile it with music or additional takes or anything like that. This is just one straight audio file. So instead, I'm going to opt for creating a multi-track session right up here and we'll call this demo for the purposes of today's demo. I'm going to save this to my desktop. Um, you might want to save this to an external hard drive if you're working from an external hard drive. Just be mindful that's where it's going to save. Templates is pretty self-explanatory. However, I wouldn't use any of these templates that they provide. Instead, I would just create my own and that way I can recall my settings immediately. Sample rate, we either want to use 48,000 or 44.1. Uh, 44.1 is CD quality. Most people will expect you to record at 48K now. So I would put that at 48K and bit depth, we're going to go 24. Again, CD quality is 16. 32 here is way more dynamic range than you would ever need for a voiceover recording. So 24, 48 is a really safe bet. We're going to keep our mix as stereo. Even though we're recording a mono instrument, we're going to have one mono track in a stereo session. So this is all set and ready to go. So I'll click OK. And you can see here it creates six audio tracks. Don't really need six audio tracks. I just need one for now. So just in the interest of cleaning up my session, I'm going to click on this top one and I'm going to do Option, Command, Delete. And I'm going to do that five times until I just have one track here and a master fader. Now I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'm going to call this Randy Voice. That sounds perfect. Uh, and we are set and ready to go. So the first thing we can do is click record here. This is going to arm our track and you can see that it's armed because the levels are now coming in. But I want to use this meter here down at the bottom just because it's, it's got a bit more information. I can see exactly how loud I am. So what I'm going to do is click this I, which stands for input monitoring. And this is going to pop the level down to the bottom there. Now, when you're adjusting your gain on your microphone or your gain on your interface, you want to shoot to peak right around negative 12. You see, I'm, I'm peaking right about there right now. That's right around the sweet spot where you want to be for voiceover recording. Of course, we can boost that in post later, but the idea is that we want to set our levels to be good, but conservative enough that if we need to get loud for a certain piece or a bit more dramatic, we're not going to have to worry about it clipping and hitting zero dB over here, which will in fact clip. So negative 12 is a really good sweet spot to set your levels and we're all set and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and record some audio here. This is a test of using Adobe Audition for this demo. This is a test of using Adobe Audition for this demo. Perfect. Now you can jump in and edit these files as much as you'd like. You can delete the first one, get rid of the second one. You can put in crossfades. One thing that's pretty awesome about Adobe Audition in particular is that if you double click this region, it's going to bring you to this view, which is what we call a frequency spectrum analyzer. Um, it's a very fancy way of saying that the frequencies are divided by ranges. So you can see here the ranges from lowest frequencies to highest frequencies, and then the X axis represents time. So you can see there's my recording in time. And down here, I can see it divided by frequency content. 
What's interesting about this view is that you can see where all the frequencies are lying in your recording. So when I'm quiet over here, for instance, you can see there's actually a lot of low end rumbling happening. And I know that's happening from the construction site just over here. So you can see all this highlighted stuff down here. And then when I'm speaking, you can see my voice actually fills quite a large range. And you can see down here at the end when I've stopped talking, there's silence again. What's really cool about this view is let's say there's a squeaky door in your recording or something like that. Let's say it's this one right here, this blob. What I can do is just highlight that and I can bring that gain down, let's say about 40 decibels or so. And look at that, it just completely disappears. It's magic, basically. It, you can be quite surgical with this tool. You just have to be a little bit careful and use some discretion. Now, over on the left-hand side here, we have our effects rack. So in here, you'll be able to add any number of effects. You can put on your EQs, your compression, anything that you'd like to sweeten your recording. And that is basically it. Well, I hope that this video was helpful for you and I'd encourage you to comment down below with which DAW you're using and which DAW you'd like to see us cover next. Uh, are you considering switching to Adobe Audition? It's definitely one of the best in the category, hence the name Audition. Again, I hope this was helpful for you. Happy auditioning, and we'll see you guys in the next one.